Hi guys, and welcome to the inaugural episode of The Carla Garrick Show. I'm so excited to be beaming into your homes, beaming in live to Facebook. And you know, when I thought about what I should do, and this the show, obviously for the folks back home who know me, uh, know I do a show on Tuesdays called Manch Talk with my co-host Tammy Simmons, but you know, I have things to say, and so I wanted to take the opportunity to really just be able to talk to you guys directly. Um, one of the strange things about being an immigrant with a weird last name is you got to figure out how to say it. So when I was originally thinking about what to call this show, you know, I had a lot of ideas. Uh, for people who follow my website, carlagarrick.com, know that the tagline for that is the art of independence. So that is definitely something that is near and dear to my heart. And that is something I want to capture on this show. Nobody's perfect. We are so afraid of failure, but we get in our own way, and I want to represent or show to you guys that anything in life is possible. You just got to try. You're going to fail a lot, but then you pick yourself up and you go on. So when I was thinking about what to call the show, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do the art of independence. Then I was thinking, oh, maybe I should call it the free stater, right? Because a lot of people know I'm kind of a little anti-establishment, uh, so much so that my doormat at home says, come back with a warrant. You would be surprised. <laughs> by how many people love, especially delivery people, love, love, love that doormat. And will tell me, wow, where'd you get that? You can get it on Amazon. I don't get paid for these <laughs> promotions. So anyway, so I was like, ah, oh, should I call it the free stater? Then I was like, oh, what about this? Independence, whatever. But the reason I hesitated to call it the Carla Garrick Show is the following. The way you actually say my last name is Gierke. I know, that is a really, really, really hard last name to use in America. It's got the ch sounds, no one can do that. Um, you know, so it just, it didn't really translate. So my coming to America story goes as follows. Uh, my husband and I immigrated from South Africa in 96. So I had won a green card in the green card lottery. So for folks who aren't familiar with what this is, it is actually a lottery that the US government runs and they give about 25,000 visas per year to people who don't live in America, who have, I believe they call it the, um, they have a low historic rate of immigration to America and they provide you with an opportunity to come. Basically what you have to do is you have to fill out a form, you have to have a high school uh, education and then you give your name and address. So what happened was my sister who got recruited from South Africa to come work in America, she's an occupational therapist, had moved out in like 94 or 95. My parents went to visit her. They heard about this green card lottery. So they called me, I was still in college, I was in law school in South Africa, and they called me and they were like, hey, there's this green card lottery uh, that they're doing. Should we enter you and at the time my boyfriend, now my husband, Louie, into the lottery? And we were kind of like, sure, crazy parents, why not, right? Because the chances are really, really slim that you'll win. I actually totally forgot we'd even had that conversation. And we ended up, and this was around the time, uh, this is like old school by this stage, but there was a movie that came out that was called Green Card, and it had a French actor in it called Gerard Depardieu, I think is how you say it, um, and Annie someone, I'm going to blank on her name. Anyway, we had literally gotten back from uh, watching that movie, and there was this massive envelope on my doormat, which did not say come back with a warrant. <laughs> it was just a normal doormat. And, um, and I was like, oh, there's this massive envelope. What is this? You know? And I opened it up and it was like, oh, 
you have won the green card lottery. And I was like, no way, this is crazy. Uh, so anyway, we go through all the steps. Uh, it's, it's a lot of steps. Uh, Louis and I actually were just dating and living together at the time, but we were like, ah, should we get married? What should we do? And I was very gung ho. I was like, look, I'm going to America. It's the best place on earth. It's the freest place. It's awesome. I want to go live there. Who wouldn't do that if you had the opportunity, right? So I was like, well, I'm going. And he's like, well, I love you, so I want to come too. So we go to the embassy in Johannesburg. And I had initially said, hey, uh, like, if I get a green card, can my boyfriend get a green card too? And they were like, yeah, no. That's not how it works. If he wants a green card, he either needs to apply for himself or you guys need to be married. So we uh, snuck off and got married. My parents were there, Louis' parents were there. We didn't even have wedding rings. We like borrowed our grandparents' wedding rings and the whole thing, right? And then we, we got married, we did the paperwork, we sent that in and uh, planned a, like a proper wedding like three months later where the whole family came and it was very, very nice. So anyway, long story short, now you know we're, we're immigrating, we're, we're planning things. We ended up packing uh, two suitcases. We sold everything we owned. Uh, for me personally, like the saddest I was was when I had to go sell my uh, my book collection. You know, I'm a big reader, uh, regardless of what the internet thinks. I'm not anti-science. Um, I'm a big reader, and I had a great collection of books. Um, I had, you know, amongst other things, uh, a collection of uh, the entire collection of William Shakespeare's works, and you know, and I had to take it to a flea market and sell my books, and that was kind of sad. So. Uh, so, you know, we immigrate, we've got the two suitcases, we're on the plane, and we're coming to America. So you have a bunch of paperwork and you get to America. And they're like, okay, immigrants, you guys gotta go in this room over here, right? So they put you in a room that is literally called an interrogation room. That's a little intimidating. <laughs> so we're sitting there and it's actually a pretty big room and there's a, uh, you know, people from all nationalities, different immigration statuses, all of that. So you're sitting, you're kind of tired, you've been flying for ever and ever and ever because, you know, it's far to fly from South Africa, really only Australia is further. It's like a 19 to 20 hour flight. And, um, and I think these were still the days where like you couldn't even fly all the way direct. Like we had to stop at Ila de Sol, which is a little island in the middle of nowhere where they uh, would put in gas and then you go to Europe and then you come here, fine. So we're in this little room and I'm sitting there and, uh, and you're tired and you're kind of nodding off. You're watching other people, kids are screaming, people, you know, the whole, the whole thing. And I hear this voice say, Carla Garrick, Carla Garrick. Now remember, I think my name is pronounced Hirke. So I'm like not even listening. I, actually, I don't even think they said Carla. They just said Garrick, Garrick. And I was like, huh. And eventually I'm like, you know, and no one's responding. Eventually I'm like, do they mean me? Is this, is this me? And I'm like, me, you know, so, so fine. So I'm like, huh. I guess that's how Americans say my name. Now, for anyone who's an immigrant, which really we all are, right? Because everyone's forefathers came from somewhere. So it's just generational in terms of how long ago you were fresh off the boat. Uh, but a lot of people know that the Ellis Island uh, story is always like, either you have a weird name and they just Americanize it when you get there or they change it or all of that, right? So I heard the Garrick and I was like, I guess that's how you say it. But then it didn't feel right because your name is so, so much a part of you, right? It's the thing that you grow up with. It's the thing you always hear. So it's very actually unnatural to oneself to hear your name in like a weird, <laughs> weird pronunciation or in a weird way. So for a very long time, I was actually super uncomfortable <laughs> with saying my name because I didn't really know how to say it. This would be less of a problem if, I, one, wasn't leading a fairly public life, and two, wasn't running for office. 
So here's the catch, right? So in 2016, for the first time, I ran for state senate here in the great state of New Hampshire. So that uh, that kind of made it like, eh, you're going to have to pick a lane. You're going to have to pick a way to pronounce your name and stick with it. And at the time, I was actually experimenting a little bit. So I was like, well, Hirike, maybe Gerike sounds closer, right? But also, based on the way you spell it, that doesn't seem entirely right and whatever. But I did meet a, a, a activist at uh, Frank Ginta's office. And I ran into him the other day, which is the only reason I'm mentioning it. And he said to me the other day, he goes, Carla, do you know how many fights I've been in with other people about how you pronounce your name? And I was like, no, tell me why. And he goes, because the first time I met you, you said your name is Gerica like America. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's a great line. I should have stuck with that one. Uh, but little did I know, right? So in 20, I think it was 2018, it may have been 2020. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to say my name that I feel comfortable with, that's translatable in America, that people can understand, and that's not confusing. So I was like, okay, let's just go with the thing the guy at the immigration office said, and we'll just go with Carla Garrick, right? So then I was like, ah, people who have hard names, sometimes, especially in politics, they'll really lean into it, right? Like they'll either do a reel or they'll do something funny or something cute or whatever. I guess maybe this video will become uh, my piece de resistance for this. But, um, but I thought, okay, maybe I can make some kind of really cute uh, video that's translatable that'll help people that we could just put out on social that that explains how we say my name so that was my genius plan so I go to a function where they're like I don't know 70 80 of you know my closest friends good friends um, and I say to them hey guys would you guys do me a solid? Like if I do a uh, call and repeat can you guys like help me out so that we can create um, a little video that we can share on social that we can uh, help people understand how to say my name. And they're like, sure. So it's actually, you know, it's set up, there's a microphone, there's a room, everyone's standing around. And I'm like, I think we're gonna have to make it a knock-knock joke. So the idea was I would go knock-knock and they'd go, who's there? And I would go, Carla Garrick. And then they'd go, Carla Garrick who? And then I would say something cute about my Senate race. I think that was like the way it was supposed to work. Now, I to this day do not know how or why or what the zeitgeist was that allowed this to happen. And sadly, uh, we were gonna Facebook Live it and it ended up that it didn't record. And I'm sad to this day because it's like, man, I wish I had this actually captured on video. But I swear, so I'm standing there and, uh, and we practice once and it just goes normally. And then we say, okay, now we're gonna shoot and record and we're gonna put this out on social. Going forward, everyone will know how to say Carla Garrick's name, right? Fine, so I go knock, knock, and the entire room goes, come back with a warrant. I don't know how, I don't know how they figured it out. I don't know what the whisper campaign was, but it was the funniest thing, if you're anti-establishment, as I am, that had ever happened to me. I'm like, knock, knock, and they all go, come back with a warrant. And it was great, and it was wonderful. So that is an extremely long intro to welcome you to the Carla Garrick Show. Uh, so we're going to say the E is silent and it's like Garrick, like, you know. All right. So now that we have that out of the way and you agree and I agree how we're going to say my name going forward, I'm very, very excited about this inaugural um, 
episode. So the flavor and the thrust of this show is going to be to interview people so that you back home can learn more about the Free Stater community, the business people who are moving here, the people who are you know, raising families. We have, uh, we have a saying, we say breed them for freedom. Uh, there are a lot of families and moms and homeschoolers and farmers and just really, a, it's a fantastic, fantastic community of people. And so I want to welcome you to meet my friends going forward. I'll probably always have a guest. The other goal of the show is to, again, as I said at the start, is to create this sort of vibe where people understand I think we get so caught up in, in trying to be perfect or we get caught up in if it's not good enough, I'm just not going to do it. So we don't actually start to do the things we really want to do. So for people who know me, I actually maybe four years ago, I just decided I wasn't happy with the trajectory of my life. I wasn't uh, feeling healthy. I wasn't uh, performing at my peak. I just wasn't where I wanted to be, right? I had just turned 45, 46 at the time. I was overweight. I was drinking way too much. And I was like, you know what? I want to change my life. What can I do, right? And I really thoughtfully and mindfully took steps to change my life. So I'm also going to use this show as an opportunity to just help you guys maybe find out what you want to do with your life, where you can change or where you want to put an emphasis. Because we're all different and we're all, you know, individuals and we have different strengths and weaknesses but also i know no one believes this but i'm actually shy english is my second language i was 65 pounds fatter three years ago uh, i had autoimmune diseases and i changed all of that so if i can do it i think you can do it and all you really have to do is believe it's possible but not just dream but actually take the action that needs to happen for that to happen. Um, based on what's been happening over the past two years, right, where we're actually moving into medical tyranny, there's no other way to describe it. And if we're moving into a space where what your health is can actually determine whether you're going to be discriminated against or not, then I think it behooves all of us to actually think about our health. Now, you've heard me say it on Manch Talk, so I'll just say it here as well. Oh, and I always feel like I'm picking on <laughs> Brendan, who is an ex-smoker. But, you know, I'm like, if someone wears a mask and you're smoking, come on, guys, right? So if we're going to move into this world where people are going to say, I can tell you what you need to do with your health, or I'm going to tell you how you need to behave in order to make me feel better, then equally, I might say to you, I'm going to expect the same back from you, right? So, so maybe this can be a journey of how uh, we can create tools for everyone to become the optimal you. So that's what I'm hoping I can do here. Um, I am trying these things out and um, we're going to, I'm gonna figure out how to do the camera part here with the computer and stuff. But the lead in for this video, so this is a video that came from um, Saturday's March. So just to set it up, on Saturday we had a giant health freedom march. Now these are not just anti-vaxxers. I'm actually not an anti-vaxxer, although I am a little vaccine skeptical at this stage, uh, but I'm pro-science. I, again, you know, read a lot. I understand stuff. I always read the source material before I form an opinion. Um, and, but I am anti-mandate because I don't think we want to live in a society, and you'll hear me say this on the show all the time going forward, we create our future. So whatever you want the future to be, you should be thinking really hard what the steps are that you're putting in. I don't want a medical tyranny future. And so I'm gonna work really hard to try and persuade you that that's not what you want either. So this was a gathering of uh, I actually underestimated it. I said it was like 750 people, but the reports in the patch and the Nashua Telegraph and other places said it was um, about 1,500 people. So this is just a little video of the march itself. It'll just give you a flavor of what's what. And hopefully this is going to play. And 
And just as you guys watch this, the uh, the lady singing was actually the band that was playing there. She was very talented. It was quite beautiful. And uh, I actually started crying just for Facebook over here uh, because there was this like 11 year old kid who was holding this sign about his uh, cousin had passed away from, from getting vaccinated. And he was just crying and singing freedom. So that is 10 pluses for Carla and Brandon. So uh, I, I feel really good about that working out. The other video I did want to show for this week, and I think one of the things we'll do on the show, because I saw I just got my five minute warning. Uh, so that went fast and it wasn't as half as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, so this is just a very short part about the speech I gave there. Um, it's like a couple of minutes long and then I'll wrap up and then we will be doing this every Wednesday at 11 a.m. starting with some guests pretty soon. Uh, so this was the uh, my, my part of the speech and um, yeah, we'll just go with that. An incredible turnout here. This is the 
is the new future. So pat yourself on the back for being here today. So uh, as, as she mentioned in the intro, my name is Carla Garrick. I will be running for Senate again. Moon Alessandra again next year. So don't forget about Sunshine. So I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna get mad for a little bit, and then we'll be happy, okay? So last year when we showed up about the lockdowns, I was walking in and I was doing the Facebook Live, and the crowd behind me was chanting, "Live free or die! Live free or die! Live free or die!" If we could sort of rewrite things, right? So one of the terrible things that they've done over the last year is they basically nearly changed people's brains. We've seen a lot of signs here that talk about fear is the virus. Fear is the virus because scared people are controllable. So look to the people to your left and right. Because we are the people who are not scared. All right, let's jump forward a little bit. They have taken the notion of an air raid siren and they have put it on the news 24 7, non stop, for almost two years. The number one thing you can do for your liberty and for your friends and neighbors is tell them to turn off your TV! Turn it off. Uh, thank you so much. We're running out of time, so that gives me a sense of you know how much we can do on a show. I really, really appreciate you checking in. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please go to my YouTube, uh, subscribe to my channel. My videos are also available on odyssey.com. My website, carlagarrick.com, my name. Uh, is updated almost daily. I have a lot of content there. Follow me on social. I've got stuff to say. I love New Hampshire. I love the Granite State. And I want to work with you to keep New Hampshire awesome. Thanks, guys. Let's live free and thrive.